A biblical perspective on life, culture and current events. This is 2020 on Vision. I'm joined in the studio today by the pastor of one of the largest churches in southeast Queensland. And I'm going to talk about church post-COVID because church got weird in Australia during COVID as it did overseas. And it's been quite interesting and challenging at times for churches to reboot since that time. So Luke Neal is the campus leader of one of the oldest ACC churches in southeast Queensland, which is now called Hope Centre Brisbane. And he joins me now. Luke, welcome. How are you? Thanks for having me. I got to say, mate, you're one of the best looking people in the studio I've had for a while, and uh, and that voice is working too. You you started well, mate. Thank you. <laughs> so, Luke, as I said, um, you know, you're the campus leader in one of the largest churches in southeast Queensland, and church did get weird for a lot of people during COVID. Tell us what your journey's been like as a church post COVID. I think post COVID, we realised that a lot of people were attending church out of habit. Um, they were connected to church by being involved in the service team. Some people were showing up just to serve as opposed to um, to come and be be fed or be filled. So we, we've experienced, like a lot of churches, we initially experienced a, a period of um, people not coming back to church. Uh, we obviously had to, you know, work out what was important. We had those, those months of having services where we had to socially distance and then we... Uh, in, in an era where volunteerism dropped through the floor, we were having to put on more services to to cater for more people without the volunteer base. So that was challenging. Um, I guess coming out of it, though, what we realized is that people needed uh, a church that focused on discipleship. And, and we, we wanted to make sure that people were connected to Jesus, um, not just to uh, a, a roster, I guess. So uh, it's been a it's been an interesting journey. It's been a challenging journey, uh, and uh, we this year have seen amazing growth and amazing strength, and feel like um, COVID is well and truly in the rear vision mirror, which is great. Yeah. So talk to me about. Um, so really, what you're saying is you've gone back to a simple faith. You've just gone back to okay, what is biblical Christianity, and let's go back there. It's about Jesus first, serving Him, you know, congregating together, worshiping Him, fellowshipping. Is that a fair description of what you just That's said? That's very accurate. Yeah, we, we, we had a good look at everything we were doing and why we were doing it and realized that you can get in a cycle of putting on church and, and trying to um, do things that uh, attracted people, but you know, were they really growing people? And I think what we've realized, and we didn't get too far down any path, we've got great leadership and I think that's really helped us stay, um, you know, focused on what's important. But I think even more so since COVID, we've we've got back to doing, I guess you could call it simple church, which is gathering people, um, pointing them to Jesus, allowing them to serve in the gifts to, that that God's given them, and really focusing on discipleship, where they are growing in their faith. They understand that as a follower of Jesus, it's not about us; it's about others, uh, and um, not don't just show up because it's part of your routine show up because one you have something to to bring to strengthen the church but also show up because you know that that is your two hours a week where you're going to get inspired and and get vision cast so that you can go out and be a a change maker for the rest of the rest of the week yeah yeah so let's talk about discipleship because you know, those of us, and I'm not old enough, but I've heard stories that in the late 70s, there was a discipleship movement, early 80s, and it got really controlling and really intense and really hurt a lot of people. And the, even the word discipleship to some evokes sort of memories like that. So define modern day discipleship, Look, How do you make disciples today? I think you make disciples by journeying with people and not thinking that you're a guru, but being okay with walking the path with people. So you know we've got this. I guess it's a uh, it's a value or a vision around our life groups that they need to be safe, spiritual, and stretching, and that we we want to get away from the the sort of teacher student model or the guru and the the the, uh, the guru or whatever that word is. Um, and let's all go on the journey together to discover what are we called to do. What does Jesus want us to do? Uh, and how can we encourage each other? Um, we we have this sort of thought at Hope Center, which is 
we want to be the, the 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 most simple church where we're not controlled by structures and systems and programs. They're there to support, but ultimately we trust that the Holy Spirit um, is way better at bringing people along a journey than we are. But we need to create environments where that can happen uh, in an ongoing and a consistent and a um, and a community focused way. Okay. So it sounds like you want your leadership to be spirit-inspired or spirit-led. How do you develop leaders that actually have the capacity to be spirit-led and spirit-guided? Because a lot of people feel safe, don't they, in structure and with rosters and programs, and they feel they can function in that. But how do you make or develop a leader who's actually big enough to go, you know what, I just feel to go here now and I'm going to do that? Well, I think it's a balance. We we have rosters. Uh, you can't run a Sunday service without a roster. You can't. I mean, I guess in the in the perfect world, everybody just shows up every week and says, "What can I do to help?" But, but, but really, you still need some level of structure. You just can't be controlled by the structure. The, the structure is like a scaffolding that supports, um, you know, everything else. And I think for us, in regards to leadership, we focus uh, on on people's personal devotions. And you know, when I have my one on ones with my team, I, it's very rarely just around their work performance. It's it's more often than not. What's the Lord saying to you? How's your prayer life? We pray together. Um, we we have structure that allows us to then be, um, you know, be sensitive to what the Holy Spirit's doing and saying. Uh, we have a run sheet on a Sunday morning, but we also say, hey, this is what we're planning. But uh, if, if something happens during the service, then we're going to go with it. We don't um, we don't turn up and not have a run sheet and say, let's just see what the Holy Spirit's saying. Uh, maybe we could or should, but we, we think that also people show up and they expect a service to be a certain length. Uh, they, they expect it to have certain elements, so we understand that, but we don't get bound by that. We just we let that be a, a foundation and a, and a support structure by which we then can, I guess, be led as, as the Holy Spirit leads. You know? That's a great balance. I really like that. Uh, just when you were saying that, it just made me think that Jesus was 100% man and 100% God. So he was 100% spiritual, but also 100% natural. And he just obviously, that just flowed together really well. So I really like that approach. But what is the biggest challenge, do you think, for a modern day church in Australia? Look, regardless of size or where you are, what do you think the, one of the biggest challenges is churches are facing today? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, look, I think one of the greatest challenges is how do we present the real version of Jesus in a way that is authentic and is supported by a local church community but not not affected or not uh, presented through a filter of local church that may be off-putting for some people. I think most people in Australia would be very happy to have a conversation about Jesus. You know, we're putting together an Alpha course at the moment uh, and, and we're we're, we're creating it to be specifically targeted at high-end professionals. Um, and we're going to talk about, hey, if you want to learn leadership, let's learn from the greatest leader there ever was. So we're not, we're not shy on presenting Jesus. We're just doing it in a way that they understand. And I think uh, the church has not necessarily, I'm not talking about our church, I'm talking about the church, capital C, has not necessarily always given people the best and most authentic version of Jesus. So how do we do that um, in a real way? How do we do that in a in a way that is based on trust and relationship with the people around us? But then how do we bring them on the journey of being part of a church community? Because the church is God's plan for the planet. It's not a mistake. That's how uh, people are going to find out about Jesus. Because if the church does what the church is meant to do, then um, then we bring the real authentic version of Jesus and present him in a way that changes lives. Uh, but that balance of presenting Jesus through the uh, the body of Christ without letting the label or the brand of church get in the way. Yep, yep. Good answer. And, um, I mean, you, you're saying your church is growing recently. Are you guys seeing salvations in the last year or two since COVID? Yeah, absolutely, especially this year. This has been a really strong year. We normally dip a little bit in winter, and I think most – Churches do. You've got, you know, you're competing with the cold or whatever the version of cold is that Southeast Queensland offers, which is, you know, one day in July, I think. It's minimalistic. Uh, uh, yeah, school sport, local sport. Uh, but we've grown. We're, we're also reaching into universities and starting to see 
university students turning up on a Sunday night. We're bringing them in, in on a bus and um, they're looking for community. They're looking for, for you know, answers to questions that they're asking. Uh, so we have grown. Um, we've also grown our volunteer base. Uh, we've decided to do less events this year and just focus on amazing Sundays where we're presenting Jesus and then encouraging people to, to be in community during the week and to reach uh, their local neighborhood and, and the people around them. So, yeah. Which goes back to that simple, organic, biblical Christianity. Correct. From yeah. the Bible. But so you've seen people saved. So what are you hearing from people? Why are they getting saved and what's resonating with the people who are getting saved this year? I think firstly, they feel safe. So I think people who don't know Jesus, um, you know, th- there's this cliche that people need to belong before they believe. Um and I think there's real merit in that. I think if people come into an environment where they don't feel safe or they don't feel welcomed, then uh, hearing a message of of a, of a God that loves them and wants to wants them to be part of His family is a little bit more challenging. So we've we've focused on doing, um, you know, creating an environment where community is a big part of what Sundays look like. And then I think just presenting the truth of the gospel. Um, I think everybody is asking questions that they want answers for. And it may sound a little bit sort of generalistic, but I think the world needs Jesus, you know, and Jesus is the answer to most questions that people are asking. Why is my marriage not working? And um, why is, you know, why are my finances a mess? And why do I feel unfulfilled even though I'm the CEO of a company? I think everybody has a a, a gap in their heart that is Jesus-shaped and it's our role to present that and and then invite them into a community of discipleship where they can continue to to grow and uh, you know even Jesus didn't do life alone he invited 12 men and and a lot of others to join him on the journey and and together they all went on the journey of making each other better and I think um I think that's what real church is yeah yeah, awesome. And just final question, Luke. You're part of a church which was once called the Glad Tidings Tabernacle. Yes. I believe it's 95 years old. Tell us quickly the history of that church and the church planting that came out of that. Yeah, so uh, it was founded by William Booth Cliven, who is the, my understanding is he's the grandson of um, of the founder of the Salvation Army who came out uh, in the in the 30s uh, to, to run um, evangelistic missions. They started in a tent and then during the Great Depression, took up offering after offering after offering to build um, what was a heritage-listed building before um, it was affected by fire in the early 2000s. But they built this amazing 600-seat auditorium in downtown Fortitude Valley. And then over the decades that followed, um, that church, which was Glad Tidings Tabernacle, then bought land and sent out um, couple after couple, pastor after pastor, I believe at one stage there was 15 maybe AOG churches all with land and property that had been bought, purchased, and, and uh, sent out by Glad Tidings. So it's a, a church with an incredible legacy, an incredible history, a church that has spent decades sowing into the kingdom. And, um, yeah, I feel very privileged to be uh, to be where I am doing what I'm doing. As the campus leader of that church, you're on a long list of uh, Christian legends, aren't you? How does that feel? Does it make you feel a little bit like, am I the right guy for this, or have they chosen the right one? Uh, it does. Every day I wake up and I say, God, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be here. Um, I need you. Help me and give me wisdom. But I think that's where we're meant to be, so I'm, I'm, I'm okay with it. Awesome. Well, Luke, so good talking to you today and getting a little bit of an insight on what's happening at Hope Centre Brisbane there. I want to thank you so much for joining us on 2020 today. Thank you very much. Lovely to be here. Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.